So there's going to be a few videos coming up of this one in the near future. I've got a lot of mods that I want to put on it. I just haven't had time with the other cars I've been doing to put the uh, parts on that I wanted. But we're going to increase the power, do some suspension mods, so stay tuned. First off, though, the other week I was out in it and um, we've got an ABS fault come up. I've done a Opcom reading on it and it's the front right ABS sensor. Uh, I'm going to check if it's the sensor itself or if it's the wheel bearing. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a wheel bearing, which I've, I've got a spare one of. So I'm going to show you how to test that with Opcom, which is pretty simple. But I'm also going to show you how to test it manually if you haven't got no diagnostic equipment, uh, no generic OBD2 readers. So stay tuned. So as I say, I've always got spare hubs, spare parts. You're always going to need, especially if you're on track, take the video. So um, yeah, got a brand new hub. I'm going to show you how to replace that. So if you don't know what Opcom is or you've never used it before, basically you just need yourself a laptop and you need to download the Opcom software off of, say, Google or there's a lot of places you get them with the discs when they come with the hardware themselves. This is the hardware. This plugs into the OBD2 port and then obviously this lead then connects it via USB into your laptop and then you can do diagnostics. you just got to install the drivers. It's very simple. Right, so I've just plugged it into the OBD2 port. Make sure you've got the red and the yellow light on. And make sure your ignition's turned on. Connect it to the USB of your laptop. And if you're looking for the ABS faults, just go to chassis, obviously engine management faults, go to engine. Traction control ABS. Let that connect. Right, so that's connected now. Then you just go to fault codes, obviously. And you can see here, front right, wheel sensor open circuit so that tells me there's a problem completely no signal from the uh, front right wheel and the front right on on opcom will be from sitting position not um from standing outside so front right will be the near side wheel so that's the one to check first and check your wiring check your sensors and uh check your plug connection sometimes it just needs a plug pulling back out and putting back in so that's the easiest way to check. Right, obviously first off, get your car up in the air, get it jacked up. Uh, obviously stick an axle stand under there, not responsible for the car dropping on your legs. Get the wheel off. First things first, you want to remove the pin out of the drive shaft. It's better to replace them at the end. And then what you want, you want a 30 mil socket and that will go over your drive shaft nut. I always use a deeper socket. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I don't really like to use on the Brembo's because they're aluminium but the steel calipers, they're perfect to use. Basically, get yourself a quarter inch drive. Now, obviously, if you're doing them up, it's the other way around, but quarter inch always fits perfectly in between the disc. And as you can see, wrap something around so it protects your caliper. On the steel ones, it doesn't really matter because they're um, nice and tough. But as soon as you turn the disc and it wedges up against there, you've got a nice, base to be able to crack off your nut obviously on this side the socket's got to go under here but it's just easier to show you on the top and i'll get that off now right so you've wedged your quarter drive in there make sure it's protected so it doesn't damage your caliper get yourself a breaker bar 30 mil socket and you literally this has got to be really tight as you can see there you go so that's broken off now you can see you can do that one-handed without any help from anyone pressing on the brake. Move your quarter drive and your drive shaft nuts loose. So one thing I love about these Brembo's is everything's quick release on them. So I've just cracked them off already and you literally can just undo them all with your hand. Obviously it's designed for track work. You can just take the calipers off super quick. Obviously at home you might not have the same brakes on your car or you might have the um the original brakes but the fact is the same remove the caliper and uh move it out of the way so you can get the disc off so you can see that that's how easy it is two bolts to get the brembos off if you haven't got brembos on your car or haven't got a, a good brake set up and you're running big power, then I highly recommend you do so. One of the best things that you can do to these cars are good brakes, um, good suspension, and a good uh, diff, either Quaife, Wave Track, or Gripper. 
Right, so you just want a number five socket, Allen key. Remove this before you can get the disc off. Depending on how long they've been off, they're normally easy. If you copper grease them, some people have to drill them out because they uh, over tighten them. Right, so I've moved off the disc. Um, I've removed the nut off the center of the drive shaft. And now what you want to do is release this wishbone off the hub and that both sides are 18 mil. So the, the, the nut's 18 mil and the bolt's 18 mil. Right, so the quickest way I've always found to get this wishbone out the bottom of the hub without any other tools other than a lump hammer and the half inch extension. This is one I use to beat up on, so it's never gonna be used again as an extension. I just put it between the hub and the wishbone. There you have it, pop straight out the bottom. It's not been apart for a while, so it's a bit rusty, so it's a bit more tougher. Normally I have copper grease in here, but this car needs a uh, good going over. It's so reliable that I don't have to do anything to it. But I'm gonna over the winter I'm gonna give it a freshen up and redo a lot of stuff and you'll be seeing videos of that. Right now the hub's free, you can obviously just push the drive shaft through, maybe give it a little tap. And it'll just come out the back like that. Right, so on the back of this hub there is three Torx bolts that hold it to the hub. They're E20s. Uh, you can just about see there's one of them and there's another one up there and another one on the opposite side basically you just got to crack them off they'd be nice and tight obviously over the years they've rusted on so get a nice breaker bar on there loosen them off right here's a comparison between the new and the old hub this blue clip is just to protect the uh clip while it's in transit so it doesn't snap so you just remove that chuck it out of the way uh, try when you're buying these hubs, try and buy a little bit more expensive one. I think this was like about 80 quid, but it's um, better than the ones that you get off eBay that are really cheap and nasty. You'll get everything you need. Uh, brand new pack, which I don't put on because I don't fill my alloys. You get a nice brand new nut, a, a set of brand new bolts, and uh, a brand new pin as well for your drive shaft. So you get everything you need to replace it, and you ain't got to reuse any of the old crusty items and you have uh, a lot of carefree motoring. For a lot of years, these hubs, as I say, will do a good 60, 70,000 miles before they knacker. Um, to be honest, the wheel bearing on this is actually very good still. Uh, the only thing that breaks on them is the ABS sensor itself, which is what happened. So obviously this is totally optional, but I like to go over the hub because it's bare metal with a bit of paint. It just allows it to last a little bit longer. So I use a very high temperature paint I'll just mask it off and give it a couple of dusting coats of that because otherwise the surface rust will get on it straight away and start rotting it and uh, it looks terrible. So it says I say it's an option but it just allows the hub to last a little bit longer without looking a proper state. So before you put anything back on the car always rub it in a little bit of copper grease it just makes it 10 times easier. Once you've come to take the car apart in the future which you will do a bit of copper grease um, the bolts won't be seized up. You won't be snapping bolts. It's a pet eight of mine to have bolts that are snapping because people haven't used a bit of copper grease. Obviously, once it comes back to refitting the hub, it's obviously the opposite of what we've just done to take it out. But inside here, it gets a lot of surface rust. So go round it with a bit of 60 grit, 80 grit sandpaper. Just get rid of that surface rust. So another one, when you put this hub back in, make sure this sensor is always pointing towards the front of the car because it can go all different ways, you know, upside down. So make sure that the sensor is that way when it goes into the car and it allows it to be plugged back in up here into the clip. So I wanted to do this with all normal hand tools that you'd have indoors, which makes it a lot easier for you to do than if I was to use all power tools or electric tools that you might not have. So that's why I wanted to go through it thoroughly for you. So make sure you've got everything you need. Right, so that's the hub bolted back on, nice and tight. Now before you put this drive shaft back in, you want it to be clean. You can see there's a lot of surface rust and that on it. So just go over it with a wire brush. Make sure it's nice and clean before it goes into the hub. That way it won't seize when you're trying to take it out in the future. So clean up all the threads of any of the rust. 
and then go over it with some copper grease. And that way you'll be able to get it out in the future without any problems. You see it's nice and clean now. Just get a little smear around your finger, rub it around the splines, and that'll allow a much smoother fitment and a much smoother removal if you ever need to get back out again. So simply just pull your hub back out, align your drive shaft, and then wiggle it about as you push the hub back. You can see it's not in center at the minute, so you just keep wiggling it and it'll come through. And that's it, that's in. So very important, make sure you refit your washer. The washer goes in here. Just before you do that, get yourself a little bit of copper grease for the threads, refit your washer, and then get yourself your nice brand new nut. Obviously this nut's still okay, but you might as well put the brand new nut on as well. So, so you don't damage up your sensor while you're trying to put things back together, put this in now. <clears throat> Make sure it's pointing upwards and then just clip it into your bracket. Right, so I didn't want to bore you again by putting it all back together. You knew how to do it. It's the complete opposite of the way you've done it before. So what you want to do now is you want to use that little trick that I said about with the quarter inch drive. Obviously now the nuts going this way, it's going to push up against the top of the caliper. So make sure you wrap something around there to protect it. Put it through the disc. And that way, now nah, it's pushed up against the disc, nice and tight. Get your breaker bar. Get your socket. Right, so I didn't want to bore you with showing you how to assemble it all again. It's complete opposite the way you've done it. You know how to do it. So get yourself that little trick that I said about, the quarter inch drive, long one, and then um, wrap it around with a bit of protection because it's going to nah. So I didn't want to bore you with putting it back together. It's complete opposite of the way you just took it apart. You know how to do that. So now use that little trick that I said about. Use the quarter inch drive. Obviously now the disc is going to be turning clockwise. So you want to put it into the disc, wrap yourself around a bit of protection because it's going to be pushing up against the caliper. As I say, they're better on the steel calipers than they are on the aluminium ones, but still get away with it. Push it up against it. Now get your breaker bar. And now you really want to hang off this. Obviously, this is holding the drive shaft in. So... Nah, that's about as tight as you want to do it. But you're still lining up this pin. So I'm going to give you a close-up view of that. You see, it's done up extremely tight, really tight with a breaker bar. So now you can just drop your pin. This is the pin that come with it. That goes in the hole. Make sure that obviously the castle nut is lined up when you're doing it up. So that goes through and it'll go through the bottom, like so. And then now bend these tabs in so the pin can't pull back out. So that's it, pin's bent up, drive shaft's in nice and tightly, it's time to get the wheel on. Right, so job done. So I've just dropped it down, I've done up the wheel bolts, make sure you always do up the wheel bolts. 110 newton meters on this car, um, a lot of cars are around the same sort of spec. Don't over tighten them, you end up snapping them, stripping threads. I always put a little bit of copper grease on the wheel nuts or wheel bolts, and just uh, uh, allows a lot easier of talking. So, I hope this video helped you. Um, I'm sure it will help someone out there that's changing their hubs. I slowed the video down this time so that a lot of people um, could see what I was doing. Um, I've had a few comments that I've done it too fast. So I didn't do no sped up sections or anything like that. So um, yeah, enjoy the video.